Hi, I'm Miu Shankri. Today I want to talk something about broadcasting. Broadcasting has become so amazingly popular in today's busy world and it is growing every year which indicates that human beings love to listen to each other talk. Broadcasting gives listeners the ability to dive into different topics without having to set aside time to read or watch a video. Podcast allows the listener to multitask because you can do it at home while driving, at work, even while doing your exercises. Apps like Apple, Google, Spotify are some of the prominent podcast apps. Let me introduce to you one uh, podcaster. This is the first podcaster that I know from Nagaland so far. The name of the podcast is Wooden Cross, hosted by Im Long. And every Sunday afternoon, he would bring up topics and discuss issues for the benefit of the listeners. You may check out for yourselves in Apple, Spotify, or even through Google Podcasts. Here is one sample. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Wooden Cross once again and in this episode I have Pastor Mio joining me from Shillong. So Pastor, thank you for your time and thank you for joining the Wooden Cross podcast. Before we kick off with other points of discussions, can you briefly uh, give an introduction about yourself, your family and your ministry, what you have been doing in Shillong? Yes, um... Miu Chankari from Nagaland. We are based here at Shillong serving the Lord for the last 14 years as pastor at Our Baptist Church. <laughs> and uh, me with my wife, we are blessed with a daughter, Tiaban, she is 12 years, and a son, Malongnan, who is uh, 9 years. My wife, she's also theologically trained. and. Uh, She's supporting me along with the children in the, this ministry. Thank you so much for inviting me to your Wooden Cross talk. Yeah, thank you so much for, for availing your time. Um, I understand that you also have your YouTube uh, channel in which you broadcast uh, messages. And can you briefly tell our listeners so that they can also check out and be blessed? This is a channel by default. <laughs> <laughs> I started, you know, exploring where I can deliver the word of God during the pandemic last year. And uh, by God's grace, I was led to the YouTube channel. And this is a channel where I try to share short devotionals, reflections from scripture mm -hmm. and also uh, some important issues that I would like to highlight and let others also know mm -hmm. and from time to time I also try to upload songs that I love to sing with my friends mm -hmm. and uh, last year middle of 2020 I started a series on the book of Revelation starting mm -hmm. with chapter 1 it's called the Apocalypse series. In between, I uh, had to uh, adjust with other topics on priority places. So for a time being, I'm uh, keeping it low, but it will continue. Okay. So my content is most to do with reflection from the scriptures and encouragements from the Word of God. Our listeners can also check out the YouTube channel and the, most of us are into YouTube and so there are lots of contents that are useful, that are helpful for us. So I would also encourage our listeners here to go and check Pastor Muse mm -hmm. Tankiri's yeah. um, YouTube channel. 
these are difficult times as we know and then the pandemic has given all of us to reflect on things that we are doing maybe even in our personal life maybe in our society our, our, our yeah our works and especially for us as church workers uh, it's a very good time to reflect upon our ministry and so um yeah. as a pastor in Shillong as a gathering to the believers there uh, so how are you able to discharge your pastoral responsibilities Great. at this time you know the church are locked down there is no free movement so how are you able to reach out to your congregation we have never been a virtually active as we are now during this uh, pandemic situation mm. we have never imagined conducting baptism wearing a BP suit or, you know, did we ever imagine conducting funerals under the cover of such uh, BP suits? These are different now, mm -hmm. but we know that the ministry should go on. And so there is a great paradigm shift in uh, what we do today in the church ministry. Yes. Where we are innovating the ministry as much as we can in reaching out to the members and supporting them in every possible manner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just virtual, but uh, during emergencies and also, you know, in times of need, as I said, we need to go extra mile, even, uh, you know, uh, at the risk of uh, our health or yes. even, you know, uh, as duty calls, we step out and likewise, uh, in reaching out to the members, each member of the pastoral team, we are assigned to a particular zone. Mm -hmm. We call it uh, uh, care groups. So each of the pastoral team member is assigned two, three care groups. And then the, we take in charge of all those uh, together. Okay. And so uh, coordination, over phone and uh, Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, it's a daily activity now. Yes. So, like I said, uh, we have never been virtually active as we are today. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the virtual platform has become very important. And before the lockdown, <laughs> very funny story. But then before the lockdown, I I came across an article or basically a video. You no. Know? something uh, about a mm. church in Los Angeles yeah. conducting um, baptism and conducting the Lord's Supper through virtual reality and so people were making fun of those things that was I think maybe the end of 2019 and mm. so now uh, now it, during those days during the normal days it was it, it sounded funny and then it was something ridiculous which you yeah. could not imagine but now <laughs> very very mm -hmm. sadly or very truly it has come uh, for us you not know, to interact and even yes. sometimes maybe to, even to conduct this uh, our sacraments through the yes. virtual channel and so something to think about for all of us initially um, maybe last year was a different case but when the second wave came back again when this lockdown started again uh, we know of the fear that we have uh, because of the contagious nature of the disease itself. But then, um, people, we are not very happy yes. about the response of the churches uh, in dealing with the pandemic. Maybe in a way that mm. no, people were saying that the church are not coming forward as the church should in times of need. So now uh, i think after says some pressure mm -hmm. from the public i think even in nagaland here uh, i i have read in the papers that few churches yeah. have opened up uh if there are structures the church um to be used for quarantine centers and all and so they are helping mm -hmm. even the government so yeah how do you see are, are do you think that the churches is doing enough by opening the doors what should be done again? Yeah, I cannot talk for other or another local church because uh, every church has a particular context, traditional mm -hmm. setting, and 
The dynamics are all the same, very different to each uh, local church. But again, the principle remains the same. Yes. And so uh, the driving force of every local church should be, what should we do or uh, what would Jesus do in such a situation? What would Jesus want my church to do? I think uh, that should be the guiding light for all of us. And then uh, yes. in that way, I think uh, we can do enough and uh, we will not miss the mark. There were even news of pastors or say mm. church leaders not really um, attending to the needs of the congregation. That's one thing. And again, another very extreme side of it is again, uh, many have lost their lives uh, to COVID and um, members have gone. So mm. in those times, we have heard of pastors and, and church leaders, especially unwilling to really go to the funeral service yeah. and to conduct a proper, mm. decent, respectable burial for the dead. And so those were some of the cases we have heard. And so in dealing with the COVID, uh, there is a risk element, I think, that we can all understand. And, and last time there was a number of about more than 40 more than 40 Jewish leaders that have passed away in India. That I mean, only from the Baptist uh, denominations. And, yes. and I'm sure that there are many from other denominations as well. With all this risk element in mind, up to what extent should a church worker or a pastor be involved? Uh, now, in, in this case, in, 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 mm. in extreme cases, just say. And so, what yeah. do you say? How, how should we respond to such situations maybe if a church member has died a funeral is required how how should he be responding to such situations yeah i remember my own experiences and at the same time one of our church member is a medical doctor he himself was uh, doing a surgery on BB suit and the patient was a COVID okay. patient and that's not just one instance but for them that's their way right. of life and you know uh, for them uh, they have their own precautions and at the same time they are able to cater to the needs of the patients just as I was mentioning about yes. the churches I think the principle remains the same for all the pastors as well. So in such a situation, what would Jesus want the pastors mm -hmm. to do? What would Jesus do? I think it comes back, it comes back to the basics, the same old uh, mm -hmm. basic question. Yes, the element of risk is very much there. But in life, in ministry, there is no success without mm -hmm. taking a risk. And that's very true, especially in church ministry. We just need to be sensible, be careful, take proper precautions that, you know, uh, we don't take foolish mm -hmm. risk at the same time because uh, it's also due with our right. common sense. So uh, the scripture is very clear about that. Know, warning us against taking mm -hmm. foolish risks. But at the same time, there are ample reasons how and why uh, and uh, in what condition, what situation we need to uh, mm -hmm. step in. And with proper precautions, I think uh, we can reach out to the needy, uh, even in this time of, you know, uh, COVID yes, situation. Yes, yes. That's, that, that's very yeah, true. I mean, uh, it's very contagious as, as we know and the SOBs are very clear and I think even the guidelines is very clear from the government and from the medical departments about what we should be doing. I mean, uh, in terms of interacting with even with the positive patients or even uh, in terms of handling the disease. And so, uh, for us, as, as leaders, again, 
Now, once we neglect the work, the basic, uh, the basic work that we are required to do, then uh, we as church leaders becomes a stumbling block even for the believers. I think that's where maybe we have missed, and I think we have gone wrong. I think initially, without uh, understanding the proper basics of from the medical perspective, and I think even from the ministry perspective as well. Yeah, if at all. The authority has put certain restrictions. Then uh, there is no reason why we should go against that. That's one. But on the other hand, if at all the authority leaves certain space for the church ministers, especially pastors, to step in and at least give a respectful funeral or right. the last rite, being taken the proper precautions and all those other measures, I think. Uh, We can really minister, especially in this time of very emotional moment. Especially because the funerals, as we know, these are not for those who have died, but it is for those、uh, near and dear ones, for those who are alive, the Biri family. And so, I think that aspect should be、uh, uh, looked into. And、uh, as ministers, given a chance, we should be happy enough. Yes, after taking proper precautions, we should take that as opportunity <laughs> to minister to、yes. the affected families. I think、uh, these are very precious opportunities where we can, you know, bless the congregation in a very special way. Moving on,、um, I want to maybe put a very controversial question. As we have said in the beginning, different、mm-hmm. with the autonomy of the local churches, we function differently. And but then, then generally now, you know, one of the church mandate,、um, mm-hmm. you know, that we are given、uh, by Jesus、yeah. is even to care for the sick,、uh, to care for the downtrodden, to feed the hungry. So now, but when you when you look around now at these times again, again even in the pandemic, I'm not I'm sure the churches are doing what they can in their own ways. But now in Nagaland, I'm sure most of the churches are、uh, doing well in, in in their own ways, in terms of finances and all. Now we see that we are investing. You know, the churches are investing thousands, maybe in terms of lakhs and in terms of crores, in in the mission works, maybe outside of Nagaland. And at the same time, people are、uh, churches are investing again、uh, a huge amount. Into construction works, into accumulating more and more, let's say asset, assets in their own way. Yes, we、mm. have big churches, we have big income、yeah. sources coming in,、uh, and, and so most of the churches are financially、uh, stable in many ways. At this time, such as it is now, people are not working. Maybe the daily laborers are not working. The、yes. sick are unattended. No, people have no money, and so do you think that you no, know, the church should be investing? More of the resources now in member care now more than anything else, rather than investing or rather than you not know, giving their bank balances fat. What do you say on that?、Mm-hmm. <laughs> I consider both these issues as very important. We know this pandemic situation is not going to be here forever, and、uh, we pray and hope that. One fine day, this will、uh, face off. Talking about talking about the DNA of Christianity, missionary DNA of Christianity. In our missiological classes, we hear about this. Even in、uh, our conversations about mission, we talk about this. Emil Brunner, he said,、mm-hmm. the church exists by mission, as fire exists by burning. Ministry, I think, both. Outside and inside the local church is very important, and、uh, we need to have a balanced、uh, mm-hmm. approach to both these aspects. And so, even as we take care of the people outside the church, we、right. should also not forget to take care of the members in our congregation, the health of the local church. So,、uh, yes, if we are. Investing so much on the outside, but neglecting, mm-hmm, mm-hmm.、Uh, you know, our own members. That's also not healthy, and the other way around. And so our approach should be、uh, strengthen our family, and at the same time, 
with that strength we reach out to the others to bring more members under the fold i think uh, that should be our perspective yes that that's true um even i feel every church has the responsibility now uh, both physical and spiritual responsibility to to really care for the member at this time not only the spiritual needs but again at the same time their physical needs as well and and, and as you rightly said uh, i think the balanced approach should most uh, needed at this hour and so all this um different issues now uh, coming in from different angles and the people are going through a difficult time they talk about facing a very difficult time both maybe mentally uh, emotionally and at the same time physically as well uh, and many are not used to staying at home for a longer period of time without doing anything and so that is taking a really uh, difficult mental toll on many of our members now when we talk about the church now we talk about hope so it, it is a kind of a symbol of hope for us the church now what should mm. the church be doing to keep its members spiritually fit at this time as of course we have discussed about yes. the online services and all now as a church uh, i think the whole focus of church holistic mission has to come to the forefront mm. at this at, at this pandemic i think the demonstration and the proclamation of the gospel we cannot just be mm. preachers and not doing anything about it right so so mm. what do you think uh, should the church be doing uh, for our members you know to be spiritually to be emotionally and to be uh, physically fit at this stage like you mentioned the church needs to be a symbol of hope representing christ which is very true this pandemic situation has given ample opportunity to the local churches to proclaim and demonstrate the gospel of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ in its fullest form talking about what we are doing here in Shillong because many of our members we come from our home state Nagaland and uh, people mm-hmm. come here to study people come here for their work uh, not only in government and private establishments but also for different business some are even uh, you know daily wage earners And so lockdown definitely has affected the majority of the congregation the families and so in order to address that besides what we are doing the prayer or other counseling ministry we decided to uh, form a group we call it covid response initiative Now this was first proposed by the mission board of the church and then with a common uh, platform which includes the church and the civil societies including the students we started this initiative and then we have come with a uh, different teams not only a prayer and a counseling team which is in fact one of the major <laughs> ministry of the church even before the pandemic along with that we have a medical team right and that looks after uh, the medical aspect of the members not only during emergencies but also you know uh, sharing information <laughs> and sensitizing the members and then along with that we also have a essential services team that looks into the needs of uh, the families and the members say for example if uh, a family the bread earner is no more earning we list the uh, you know families including uh, senior citizens and then uh, not just sharing finances yes. but also along with the financial support we also try to reach out to them with basic uh, you know needs uh, starting with rice and other uh, vegetables so uh, yes we cannot go beyond the word of god but 
the Word of God in its fullest form, as we call it a holistic approach, can be demonstrated and exercised, especially in a situation like this pandemic. Uh, so as long as we are able to express you know, okay, right. the principles of the Word of God, our mission is success. In fact, uh, this are wonderful season where uh, we have, like I said, ample opportunities uh, to minister to the people. And uh, not only to those who are coming to the church, but this is also a wonderful season where we can reach out to the unchurched because for them, they see love in action as we take an extra mile reaching out to them. And uh, even without preaching to them, uh, they are being touched and being blessed by the ministry of the church. Yes, uh, that is, I think that you have made a very important point um, in this regard, uh, forming a core team to, to really look into the needs of the members or starting from the medical to essential uh, gathering to the daily workers even to the extent of senior citizens and, and I, I think that is what exactly I think the church should be doing and even the congregations are looking forward to I think from the church uh, as much as there is a need for the spiritual uh, nourishment I think there is also a greater need for even for physical comfort and physical need and I think that is a very novel initiative that uh, your church, under your leadership, uh, that you are doing. Maybe I'll also pass these uh, these ideas, uh, these things, even to the church that I'm involved here. Uh, and, and and I'm I'm sure that uh, your congregations, uh, your members are being uh, cared for there. Um, one of the defenses against uh, the virus uh, is the vaccination. Um, I'm sure that many of us are praying, many of us have been praying about uh, the medicines, about vaccines, and now that vaccine is finally here amongst us. And But again, there are many rumors even among our believers. I mean, some even church leaders are hesitant no? even to encourage its members to uh, go for the vaccine. Of course, no one can be forced it's an individual choice and individual decision whether to get vaccinated or not. But again, from the medical perspective, when we when we look into the statistics, more than ninety percent of those who uh, who unfortunately died were not vaccinated, and I know that the cases are arising like that. And so, vaccines are available. People are hesitant uh, because of the rumors, because of the conspiracy theories. You no, know, even saying up to the extent of saying that. It represents the number of the beast six six six. So, so how do you look into that issue, and what would you suggest your members? Vaccine is not something new. This issue is not a very recent issue. Most of us, from our early childhood, we are vaccinated for different ailments. I mean, uh, to be protected from different diseases, and so in its own place. Vaccine in its uh, first place is to help our body defense system, strengthen our immune system to fight against whatever uh, you know diseases around us. Mm -hmm. I think the suspicion against uh, COVID-19 vaccine is also similar a few years ago when uh, different vaccines were coming up. And so uh, deep down inside the human psyche, when a new thing comes, Right. or any new situation. There is always the fear of change. But not only the signs, but also from our own experience, we have known that uh, vaccines are meant for our own profit to help our body fight against disease. And so there should not be any issue even with uh, uh, the COVID vaccine. <laughs> Of one of the reason maybe because uh, the vaccine was fast track and people are of the opinion that enough human trials were not conducted but then i think uh, that is the first line of defense for us now i mean for uh, you know to be protected against uh, the, the disease against the virus um, 
of course it doesn't cure us of the virus but i think it's one of the important defense against you know against uh, going through severe sickness if we unfortunately if we come into contact i think uh, that's very illogical to say that it carries the number of the peace it is not just biblical but at the right, same right. time human uh, logic doesn't deal de- uh, daily with what we are uh, you know uh, proposing now here we as believers because uh, this kind of statements are coming out from the uh, believers yes we need to be very careful not to spiritualize everything there is a certain li- uh, level where we need to apply our common sense and at the same time what does mm-hmm. uh, science you know help us and how does uh, it help us so uh, with the bible in one hand we should also be very much aware of what is happening around us so yes the vaccine at this time seems to be fasting but there was a reason i think why they had to do that years ago because of the funding it took years and years in coming out with particular vaccine i agree to that but now uh, on priority basis it's not just one country but the uh, government world over globally they were addressing this and so uh, it is not something done behind the screen but it was all out in the open how and when the testing and all the uh, researches were done and so uh, in that way 24/7 people were working on it scientists researchers and all those uh, people involved they were focused on coming out with the vaccine and so yes there will be some uh, fraction of incidents where such kind of uh, you know death or uh, complication happen but in general i think uh, we have nothing to worry about of taking such a vaccine thank you for the input and thank you for enlightening us before we wind up um, any last remark that you want to leave to our listeners any last encouragement for our listeners before we wind up master yes uh, days are not that easy for all of us but at the same time we are also meant to realize that this pandemic situation has brought so many wonderful opportunities for all of us especially the believers and so we need to make use of these opportunities and be a blessing to the people around us and at the same time the challenges that we are facing today we are not the only one globally world over mm-hmm. people are also facing such uh, struggles and challenges and they are also able to overcome and so just like them we will also overcome this situation we just need to be careful we just need to be sensitive and especially as uh, christians we need to be uh, sensible to the leading of the spirit and ask ourselves reflecting on the word of god what would jesus do if he's, he was here uh, how would he execute this And so with that uh, if we can look forward we pray and hope that the situation will improve very soon for just like the pandemic opportunities are also not going to be here forever so we just need to grab this opportunity and be a blessing to the people around us so be blessed and be safe thank you pastor for your time yeah thank you for coming and blessing us Thank you so much for the invitation. <laughs> It was wonderful having that chat with you. And so that's all we have for this episode in the Wooden Cross. Do subscribe to the Wooden Cross podcast in Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast or on any other platforms you listen on. You can also follow the Wooden Cross Instagram page at and leave your comments and feedbacks. So do join next week for more exciting episodes. Blessings to all and stay safe.